Okay, um, the subject of this video is, um, I, I'm reaching out here relating to um, the election of Ariel Fernandez and his putting on the agenda um, and stating in his, um, um, uh, when he, in his swearing in uh, ceremony that he wants to stop the mobility hub parking garage. Um, uh, I found out from him that he uh, has no experience. Uh, I asked him a few times. Uh, he, he didn't produce any experience at all working uh, in or uh, conducting the business of a retail storefront property. Uh, he said that he's done uh, help them with marketing. Uh, but you, I think you can imagine if, if you're working in a store and you're dependent on customers coming in the door, then you care about whether they need parking, whether they get parking, whether if the sales are slow and you're not getting enough people to help you earn your, your living, uh, you have to be concerned about the role of parking. Uh, doing marketing for a business, uh, I, I don't think there's any uh, necessary connection there. Um, and so what I need to do uh, is to reach out here to people that I'm uh, allied with on other matters in resisting overdevelopment to try to impart to you uh, what it's like if you were to ever uh, let's just say own a, a, a retail storefront property or to try to open a store. Uh, it's, it's a whole new experience. And uh, I'll just um, use uh, Commissioner uh, Fernandez's business, you know, with the Gables Insider as, as an example. Um, the, trying to, you know, he's, he's done an excellent job with the Gables Insider and it's a difficult business. You know, there's uh, the demise of local news nationally has been profound. The newspapers are vestiges financially of what they used to be. And um, so for him to succeed uh, so admirably with the Gables Insider is, is a tremendous feat. Uh, and it's not to be underestimated uh, because so many have failed. I'm friends with the people who used to have the Gables Gazette, and they explained to me uh, why they ended up throwing in the towel. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't presume to tell our hero, um, Ariel Fernandez, uh, how to succeed with, with a political blog, right? I mean, I've, I've recommended him for the, uh, the Gables Insider for the Pulitzer Prize, right? I try to help. Uh, and And it would be the height of um, stupidity, really, for me to, to say, well, this is how you should run it, uh, because I don't know. Um, but let, let's see if I can do a decent job of communicating here. Um, there is lots of places people can shop. And if, if the, the best way, actually, for me to try to communicate is if you who are kind enough to listen, think of your own shopping habits. Um, if, if you're even listening to this, it's because you're sympathetic to Miracle Mile. Um, and so you're willing to uh, shop on Miracle Mile uh, because you're loyal. But that only takes you so far. Um, if uh, you have to spend 40 extra minutes of your day finding parking, then that's going to get old. And in your you, the listeners, they, um, you know, you just don't have time, most people, uh, to, 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 to use up 40 extra minutes. You know, Miracle Mile does a, a fairly decent um, lunch trick. So imagine then someone who wants to come have lunch on Miracle Mile or in the area, you know, Aragon, uh, Giralda, Restaurant Row, all the great places. We have great restaurants, but... If you lose 40 minutes parking, 20 to, to find a place, 20 to get back to it, then you just may have lost your job, right? 
So parking is actually a very important, indeed, in my experience, um, because I've raised in a family uh, owning Miracle Mile property, my grandfather knew the the founder of Coral Gables, so we've owned property on Miracle Mile since 1930 at least. Uh, And um, basically, uh, but, but, but again, it's better to ask you and your experience what if it takes you 40 minutes every time you want to park on Miracle Mile? And then the answer, I think you will agree, is you don't actually have that extra time, much as you are loyal to Miracle Mile, because you've got kids, you've got bills to pay, you have business. Uh, and again, we use the lunch hour, right? Um, so parking is, um, and, and there's so many other places where you can shop. Um, so parking is an essential and with the developerocracy that we've all had to live, uh, under, um, one thing about the developers is they hate to provide parking. So they will go to the end of the earth to avoid having to park, to having to, excuse me, to provide parking. And, um, so it's getting harder and harder then the, the city has had these two parking garages at 245 Andalusia, where the mobility hub is slated, and at 345 Andalusia, and I've, I've actually covered this in another video, I don't know if people have had a time to, to listen to those, but basically the developers pushed us into a very precarious corner. Um, first of all, we need a large parking garage. If it's only uh, what you see across the street uh, behind the John Martin's pub. We need a huge garage because the city and the developers have been chiseling away our parking. Um, Number two, we can't afford to uh, surrender. If if we don't proceed with some version of the mobility hub, let's suppose it's just a John Martin's uh, drab garage like you see across the street. If we don't proceed with that uh, and break ground, uh, we're going to have to surrender it to developers who have told me themselves in the past they, they would not even provide parking if they could get away with it. Um, for developers, they make money when they're renting uh, you know, to, let's say, a retail tenant or to an office uh, or to a, a resident. That's where they make their money. Providing parking, they actually lose money on it, and that's why they hate it, and they don't want to provide it if they can avoid it. Um, And so I ask of you, you know, friends out there, um, I'll mention ones who won't mind me using their name, uh, Sue Sue Kowalerski, uh, Maria Cruz, um, um, Javier Baños, You know, these are people who've been in the public eye and who may uh, think that we don't really need this large garage. Um, um, The bottom line is when you have a retail store, if you want people coming in, they better have ample parking. It's not a question of do they have parking most of the time. Think again of your own life, right? If all it takes is a few experiences, and this happened to us. During during the, uh, the the redo of the streetscape, if you recall, uh, we lost tenants. Uh, we we lost customers at at the retail store that rents from me, uh, who went to other outlets because they couldn't deal with all the construction, and they never came back. So it's not like you say, well, most of the time you'll have parking. No, it's got to be to and basically all of the time. Because otherwise, if you think of yourself, be, you're the judge here. Uh, if you get burned a few times on Miracle Mile, and then you say, oh, can't really count on finding a parking space. I may be late for lunch, then I lose my job. I do this, do that. Um, I'm going to continue here. I've got an important call coming in on this very subject. 